Okay, today we're gonna to be doing an oil change on Segway Snarler. Now, whether you have a Snarler, Fugelman, Villain, doesn't matter, the concept's all the same. And we're gonna walk through doing the oil change step by step. It's an extremely simple and easy process. We're also gonna talk about the oil itself and the oil filter, okay? So first thing you wanna do is you wanna have your machine warmed up. I don't believe in changing oil on a stone cold engine, okay? This has been outside running for about, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Just gonna turn it on here and you'll see my temperature is at full temperature, okay? So to me, that's an important thing. In fact, it's at such a full temperature, you can hear the fan coming on. Yeah, all right, so Let's get ready to do an oil change on this uh, bad boy. So I got my oil change bucket here and ready. And some of you may have an oil pan, that's fine. This is just an ordinary $5 bucket from Walmart type thing, nothing special. Why do I got a garbage bag in there? Well, truthfully, I don't want to uh, have to scrub the bucket out afterwards. It's much easier just to have the oil go into the garbage bag and then we drain it out from there and throw the garbage bag away and I still have a clean bucket left. In your uh, center section of your plastic protector pan, there is this opening. It's about four inches by seven inches. And you just take that cover off, one bolt, Torx bolt takes that out, and the cover comes off and it exposes your drain plug and your filter, okay? Okay, so we have our filter, our, our ratchet ready here. We're just gonna put that in the head of this and crack that free. Now you need to be careful because this oil is hot, at least. Mine is. I'm going to put the bucket under there, like that. And we're going to take the socket. And once you've cracked it free, you can just do this by finger. But you got to be careful. Like I said, this is friggin' hot. Okay. There she goes. And we have our plug right there. We're going to take this and clean this plug all up. Just let this drain for a long time. Don't be in a rush. Okay, you take your uh, seat off the machine and it exposes the oil filler cap right there. Just turn that, take that. So just so it gets air in the top, helps more oil get out of it. If air can go in through the top, help the more oil drain out the bottom. Okay, so we got that done. The next thing we need to do is get this filter off. So just reach under and give it a twist. You should be able to do it with your hand. As long as whoever did it last time didn't kill it. There's gonna be oil coming out of here too. So make sure that, just let that drain. On a car, you could actually take a plastic beer cup put over it squeeze the filter with the beer cup and uh, the oil will drain into the beer cup so it doesn't get all over the place but there's just no room in here to do that so just turn this I'm just turning it as you can see with my thumb uh, what's going to catch this the bucket it's just going to drop into the bucket just keep unscrewing it till it won't go there we go you can see all the rest of that oil coming out of there. And we're just going to let this drain for a while. Okay, I like to let that drain quite a while. And while it's draining, we're going to talk about oil and filters. Okay, and there's a huge difference in them. What does Segway recommend? Well, we go to our back placard, or you can look in your owner's manual, and you will see that it requires SAE 10W40 with a rating of SJ. S means synthetic, J is the quality of oil and the stuff that's in it to make it come to that quality. The higher that letter is, the better the oil is. So an SK 
is better than an SJ. All right, and that's the way it works. So that's the minimum requirement. I don't use 10W40. I use 0W40. And there's a reason why. All right. First of all, does anybody know what that W means? Everybody think that that W means weight. It does not mean weight. You might be surprised. It means winter. Yes, that's right, winter. That's what the W stands for. The number in front of it, in this case, zero, is the viscosity of the oil at zero degrees Celsius, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit for our American friends. The viscosity of the oil at that temperature, in other words, how fast the oil flows. The lower this number is, the faster and easier the oil flows in the cold. The number that's afterwards, in this case, 40, is how fast the oil flows, or the viscosity of it, at 100 degrees Celsius, or for our American friends, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the critical one for operation. That determines the thickness or proper term viscosity of your oil when your machine is being ridden and under load. Because whether it's winter or not, your engine's gonna get up of close to 200 degrees once it's running and you're getting into it and, and riding it, okay? So that 40 number is what matters when you're riding the machine. The number in front of the W is how fast it flows. Now I'm gonna insert another video here. It's only about 10 seconds long. And it's gonna show you the difference between 0W, 5W, 10W, and 15W. I did not make this video, but it is gonna show you how fast or slow the oil flows depending on that first number. Okay, so now you've seen that video, it's very, very easy to see the fact that the lower the number is, the faster the oil flows. This to me is extremely important because when I start my machine up, whether it's really nice and warm outside or whether it's winter time and quite cold, I want that oil flowing as fast as possible. I don't want the top half of my engine waiting 10, 15 seconds for oil to get up there to start lubricating it. I want it lubricated immediately, everything. So I use 0W instead of the 10W. What is the rating on this oil? I use Mobile One. Uh, some of you may say, well, that's garbage. I use Purple or I use, you know, Redline. Well, well that's fine. You, you, you go right ahead. There's no nothing wrong with that. Those are very, very good oils. Uh, but so is this, because if you look at the SAE rating on it, you're going to see that this is an SN. N is much, much higher up the scale than J, which is the minimum requirement recommended by Segway. So as long as you are using SJ or above, you are using equal to or better than what the factory recommends, and there's nothing wrong with that. I personally like Mobile One. It's my personal preference. There's another advantage to this. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to see 4.73 liters or 5 U.S. quarts. Well, if you look in your owner's manual, you're going to see that an oil change takes 2.35 liters of oil. That's exactly half of this container. So I get two oil changes out of a 4 liter of Mobile One. In Canada, you can buy this at Canadian Tire on sale, 35, 40 bucks. Cost you 20 bucks for your oil change. A lot cheaper than other ones. Uh, in the States, try Walmart to see what they got there. I've seen it there, 26, 27 US for uh, five quarts. Once again, it's gonna do two full complete oil changes on the Snarler, all right? So the first time I did an oil change on this, and I used this jug, I measured it out exactly 2.35 liters of oil measured it out of this so what have i got left 
Well, I know I got 2.35 liters left. So this time I don't have to measure it. I can just jump, dump the whole jug in. Please note one other thing. It is 2.35 liters to do an oil change when you change the oil filter. If you're just dumping your oil and not changing the filter, which to me isn't a smart thing to do, but if you should do that, you only use two liters. Why? Well, your filter still has the 0.35 liters in it. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the filter. I have the genuine Segway filter. All right, as it says, made in China. Just so you know, Segway does not make their own filters. Segway filters are made by Wix in China. Wix is known as one of the best oil filters there is. And there's reasons why. Do not try to cheap out on a Fram or a Purelator filter to save a couple of bucks. This is really important, okay? The filter is extremely important. And I'm gonna open it up, the box up here now, and show you why. Okay, we have our filter open here now. And you look down inside it, you're gonna see some springs down in there. Fram doesn't have these. Now, what do these springs do? Well, there's two things. Number one, there's a valve in this filter that when you shut your engine off, it does not allow the filter to drain back. The filter stays full. So whether you let your engine sit a day or two months, that filter's full. The moment you start your engine, there's instantly getting oil to the bearings. Without that, if that filter drained out, you fire your engine up, it could take six or seven seconds until your bearings are getting lubricated. Well, what's the big deal, six or seven seconds? Well, at idle, your engine is doing 1,600 RPM. 1,600 RPM is 26 revolutions per second, or about 126 to 130 revolutions in six seconds. Do you really want your engine not getting oil for the first 120 revolutions that crank's turning around? No oil on the bearings or anywhere else? I don't. So in doing our oil change, a lot of places will just take and they'll dip their finger in the oil and they'll wipe this ring here to make it wet so that it seals up against the bottom of the engine crankcase. That's not the proper way to do an oil change. You need to fill this filter with oil before you put it on your engine. Why do you want that engine doing a couple of hundred RPMs without your bearings being lubricated? Because the first thing it's got to do is fill this filter before it can lubricate anything. Because this comes directly off the oil pump. I want my engine getting oil right away. I don't want the rings burning out and I don't want my bearings burning out needlessly uh, for no reason, just because I didn't do this step. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the cap off our oil here, and we are going to fill this filter. And it's going to come up to the top, and then we're going to let it sit for a minute. And it's going to sink down in as the uh, filter element absorbs all the oil. And it'll the level will lower. And then we're going to top it up again, and then again, until it doesn't sink anymore. Okay, so I'm going to try and pour with one hand and video with the other. Wish me luck. Okay, there we go. Hope you can see this. There, as you can see, she's come right up. And look at it dropping down. This filter is not full yet. Bring it back up. And watch it drop down. It's still absorbing into all the material, fill, totally filling the filter up. We need to keep doing this until it stops going back down. So we're just gonna let this sit for a couple of minutes. And while we let this sit, we're gonna go back under the machine and wipe off the block where this attaches to and put the drain plug back in. All right, so we're back under the machine 
and we can see that it's pretty dirty up in there, so we're just going to take our rag and clean off that surface nice and clean. Same with uh, where the oil plug goes. Get that nice and clean. Okay, so our surface looks good on the oil filter. Still see it dripping there a little bit. Nice and clean on where the plug goes. In. Let me try and wipe this out just a little bit better. There. Okay. All right, we have our drain plug cleaned off. As you can see, there's an O-ring around that. You want to inspect it to make sure there's no cracks or anything in it. Uh, that it's in good condition because the, without that, if these cracks or whatever, if it's old and cracked out, you want to replace it. And uh, the reason is, is without a good oil, seal, without that seal there, it's going to drip oil. So now we're just going to go ahead and put this back into the bottom of the block where we took it out of. Okay, so we have our uh, thing back in. Now, if you notice on there, you'll see there's a white line right there and there's a white line on the block. Can you see that? What does that mean? Well, guess what? That's where you tighten it to. Just like that. Okay? That's what that marks for from the factory. All right? Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our oil filter, and we're going to spin it on and tighten that up. So we've come back up to our oil filter here again, and as we can see, the level has gone down since it's been sitting for a little bit. We're just going to pop that up. Okay, and that won't sink anymore now. We take our finger and we're going to wet this seal all the way around. I got, I got to put the camera down while I do this. Okay, so my seal's all lubricated. Filter's full. We're going to take this now carefully. We don't want to spill it. And we're going to go back around and go under the machine and screw this up in. Okay, we have our oil filter here ready to go and i'll try and do this with the camera so you can see we just take and put this up into there where the filter goes and by finger just start turning it okay so hard to do because i'm trying to do it with one hand rather than two because i'm trying to hold this phone there there i caught the i caught it okay so now we just screw it up in all the way until she doesn't go any farther and we take and we pinch it and give it a bit of a twist just to snug it not too tight you won't get it off if you do it doesn't need to be too tight it just needs to be good and snug and there that is 95 percent of the work done the rest of the oil change is really easy all right, for the last part, you're going to take your funnel and you're going to clean it before you use it. Okay, this is actually clean now. I know you can see stuff on there, but it's clean. Um, I use carb cleaner. Just spray some carb cleaner on it. And even down in the neck, make sure you get down in the throat of that to have it good and clean. No use putting a funnel in with dirt in it and dumping oil, clean oil into your engine if it's going to have dirt in the funnel getting into your motor. Not too smart. Make sure this thing is clean. Okay, so with that, we come back up to the top side. We take our oil plug out here. Just going to set it on the battery like that. I'm going to take our funnel, put it in the hole. And this is going to be difficult because I need to pour while I hold this. I don't really think you need me to uh, show you me pouring oil in. So I'm going to put the camera down. Okay, so we got the oil in there. Now it's very important that you pour slowly. Okay, there's not a lot of room inside the cylinder head where that funnel's going. You pour too fast, it's gonna come gushing back out that hole and all out the uh, all over the outside of your engine and you don't want that. You're gonna make a terrible, terrible mess. So pour very slowly, take your time and get all the oil in there. As in my case this time, I did not have to measure it. If it was the first time I was using this jug, I would be pouring uh, two liters of oil into it. As a matter of fact, what I would do is I would use my measuring cup. And if you don't have one, see if you can borrow one from your wife. 
from baking or go down to the store and get one. I prefer glass over the plastic. Measure your oil that you put into the filter. Remember, you need 2.35 liters total, including the filter. So if you put 0.3 liters in the filter, you need just a touch over two liters going in the engine. All right, measure it out so that you're 2.3 liters. As I said, this time was my second time. I knew there was 2.35 liters in the jug, so I didn't need to measure this time, okay? So once we got that all done, we're just gonna now take our rag, put it around here, pull that out, so no oil spills on the engine. We're gonna take our oil plug, We're going to give it a little clean with our rag, a little wiping. And put this back into here. Give it a twist. And you'll feel it click into place. Okay? Are we done yet? Nope. Still got a couple things to do, but that's the major work done. Okay, so what's left to do? Well, we got to make sure the oil level's good. So we're going to take, we're going to... Turn that on. We're gonna start our machine. Oh. You see the oil light went out immediately. That's because the filter was full. Just gonna let it run for a few seconds. And shut it off. Okay, got it shut off. Now we're gonna come around to the right side of the quad. Down here. This is where you check your oil fill level. So you're going to take this out. And wipe it off nice and dry and clean. Okay, so we have this all nice and cleaned off now. Nice and dry and clean. All right, so we're going to take and we're going to stick it back in the hole. We are not going to screw it in. This is important. You're not going to get a proper reading. So you're going to take and you're going to put this in the hole. Just leave it there for a second. Take it back out. And if you can see that, the whole thing is wet. Right up to the top of the fill line. So the oil level is absolutely perfect. And you see it wet there. Okay? That's important. So it needs to be wet to... I'll show you the point. See it? Bear with me. See the oil there. It needs to be wet to right there. Okay? You do not, as I said, screw this in all the way and then take the measurement. You just stick it in. When it's dry and clean, stick it in, pull it out, and see where the level is. You snug this up. And that's it. Done. You've just saved yourself a ton of money. And you know the oil change has been done right. You know you've used good oil. You know you've used a good filter. You know you filled that filter before you uh, put the oil in the machine. You know everything's been done right. You don't have to take somebody word, oh yeah, we did it right, when all they're really trying to do a lot of times at service places is just get the job done as fast as possible so they can get paid. All right, not knocking service places. A lot of people take it in and that's fine. But I would really talk to the person going to do it, make sure they're going to fill that filter before they put the filter on. That That is a really big one. And please insist that they do that. Okay? So that's it for an oil change. We're good for another season of running the quad for oil. If you like the video, please tap like. Please tap subscribe. I don't get paid for these. I'm not looking for money for doing this. I just do it because it's fun and something for me to do. So tap subscribe. And what will happen is... Uh, anytime I do upload another video, you'll get a notification. Next one is going to be, we're going to be changing the front and rear differentials and the gear lube involved. And there's some really important stuff on that one that's quite critical about the operation of the machine. So you might want to catch that one. Hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.